Hello everyone and welcome back to Force of Nature, where in this episode we are going to be continuing with our leveling. Ideally, we are going to go and slay some goblins and uh, gather up all sorts of, well, gold and copper, pretty much. I don't think they give anything else. They might. I've not actually fought enough goblins to know for sure. I only fought a handful in my little test play. I really wish it was a run button, oh my lord. But uh, we are going to be going and fighting with them. But before we go, first thing I'm doing is grabbing some strawberries. Because as we've seen, strawberries give back some health. And so if I'm going to be going into a combat situation, it seems reasonable to expect to lose some of that health. Likewise, we are going to need just a wee bit of stamina as well. So let's see if I can't get a coconut or maybe a banana. Are there any bananas? No. This is a coconut tree, so uh, I shouldn't expect to get bananas from this one. Uh, where are the banana trees, though? Hmm. Oh, uh, my lord. It's going to take forever. Okay, you know what? I think I'm good with my uh, with my strawberries. It's fine. If I die now because of lack of stamina, I'm, I'm blaming the trees and not my impatience. I just feel that you should all know this. Right, so, in the last episode... I did uh, give you a glimpse of the Goblin Menace. Um, I can slip through there without too much trouble, but you know what? I think it's a little bit too difficult. And in, if I'm running for my life, I'll probably go to the wrong side. So let me just clear an actual path through here so that I can easily get back in the future should I need to. There we go. There we are. So we've got a, a clear path. You know what, though? Let's go to crafting. No, in fact, let's go to building, which is B. Decorations. Can I make a torch? Yes. Yes, I can. I can, in fact, make two. I think this is going to be seriously clever. Pop a torch there. And then we're going to do the same. We're going to pop a torch down here, just so that I can see where on earth I'm going when the time comes. Let's build one of these just around here. Uh, sure, I'll pop them there. That's good enough for me. Okay, so this should allow me to uh, pick my path back if I need to. If I'm in a hurry and I'm looking for safety... Ooh, chicken. Must remember that chicken lives over there because we are going to want to tame that later on. Now, all of these beautiful, beautiful fruits... Aha! Hello! I require to wallop you. Now, I've got a hammer. I can't... Oh, have I, uh, no, I'm hitting you with an axe. I was like, why am I not doing a massive amount of damage? I feel that my damage is subpar. And it's because I was hitting you with an axe. Why hitting you with a stone axe does not cause massive grievous wounds? I have no idea, but it does not. And it makes me a little bit sad. Now, I can't dodge whilst using this. A lot of people in the comments have uh, filled me in on what the whole dodging thing is. And it's just that whilst wielding the cudgel, you can move. Whilst swinging a, ma uh, a hammer, you cannot. And I'm going to just, you know, stuff my face full of strawberries in the middle of this fight. Because that seems like a completely reasonable thing to do. There's another one over there. Let's go and get rid of you, shall we? Yes, I think we probably should. I'm not going to slay the chicken, though, because, well, I want to tame it later on if I can. And let's eat a little bit more as well. Okay, so, are there any other things around here that I really care for? There's a little bit of wheat. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll gather some wheat, I suppose. Uh, let's grab you. What about you? Let's get, grab some mushrooms. This would be tin over here. Uh, is there something around here? Something is coming for me, maybe? Mm. I'm not sure. I can hear a lot of stamping feet, but I think it's my own. Ah! I'm in one of those situations where I'm getting worried about my own shadow. That's very embarrassing. And I will eat some health regenerative strawberries in just a moment. I should really grab myself some of the apples. Now, I'm kind of being a little bit fast and loose with my health at the moment for a very specific reason. I do want to showcase... Well, I'll be honest. I want to showcase how bad the uh, low health indicator is. Now... I'm a big fan of visual indicators, something to let you know. Sometimes they can be a bit obnoxious, like massive, um, like a red haze at the edge of the screen with veins um, creeping out the, the more damaged you are. Really, I'm not getting any apples from this thing. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, 
apples, significantly better because they also give you a bit of stamina back. Um, I'm actually going to chop this tree down, though. Now, I'm, sometimes it can be a bit obnoxious, but I'm generally fairly happy with a, a, an additional visual indicator, something that is difficult to miss. I'm not a big fan of audio indicators, I'll be completely honest. That gets a little bit tiring, and by a little bit, I mean very, very tiring, very, very fast. Ooh, the rustles are also pretty good. Okay, I'm, I'm down with that. We've got a banana. Uh, I'm actually going to straight up use that banana straight away. Um, is there anything else in here that I can eat? Not really. Not really. Fair enough. Right, we don't want to get too far away because I will unfortunately get lost very, very quickly. But this game has an incredibly obnoxious visual indicator of, of damage. And that it visual indicator... Oh, lots of goblins. I am lost in the woods surrounded by goblins. But that visual indicator is actually so obnoxious, it borders on just outright, you know, well, honestly, when it gets into its later stages, I'm, I'm half tempted to implement some sort of uh, epilepsy warning, frankly, because it is incredibly jarring. Just massive white static with frequent uh, flickers in the static that the lower you get in health. It's really, really quite bad. Not a fan of it at all. There's loads of goblins around here. I need to be generally going in this direction, I believe. There is... Right, we want to be generally pointing that way. There we go! There's my torch over there! Ha-ha! Does not cast nearly as much light as I expected. I have not built them before. Next time, I think I will put less stock into how good they are. Though, I mean, you know, when you're nearby, they're great. But it's the camera angle, really. I've got s <laughs> such poor distance... Um, distance vision. It's just horrible. Now, right, let's have a look. We've got 12 copper coins and 3 gold coins. How much do we need for our quest? We require another 3 copper coins and another 2 gold coins. That's actually really, really not that bad. Uh, I'm going to take many of those, and then I'm going to take many of these. Also, we are very close to having everything we need. And now that I've got some more uh, t uh, glowing embers, I can place down some more torches. So I'm, go I'm going to mark this area a little bit better because it does cast a, a reasonable halo of light I will say it's just that initially it was less than I would have hoped now where are the enemies I believe there are a lot of enemies over in this direction I'm gonna place another torch down around about here I think let's go ahead place one next to this giant tree oh, I like that tree that tree is uh, it is approved 100% by the Avakian authorities uh, let's see. The Ministry of Approval has offered its its uh, rubber stamp. Uh, let's see. You don't want to get rubber stamped by the Ministry of Disapproval. That, that doesn't tend to end very well. Hello. There we go. And let's just clobber you to death. Thank you. I'm not sure. Ooh. How many are there? Only two. That's fine. I'll just... Ah, the ones with the... Well, they look... They look honestly like... I can't tell. Are they actual skeletons? Are, are part of them dis decaying? I honestly can't tell. Are they, they undead goblins? Are you undead goblins? You actually might be. I thought it was like body paint to start with, but I think those are actually bones. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Alright, we've got to build a blast furnace now, but I still have to find a couple more... Uh, coins, it seems. Where's the giant tree? There's the giant tree. Has it got the torch next to it? Yes, it does. Okay, uh, I think I will place a torch around over here. I love it that the cockerels crow. That is awesome, in my humble opinion. I'll close that. And let's go on and take you out, shall we? Hello. It does actually seem that these goblins are of the not entirely alive variety. Which I was a little bit surprised by. Right. Are these showing up only enemies or also some uh, just animals in general as well? There we go. Thank goodness one of them had the golden coins there. Okay, so we'll follow our line of torches back and this will also highlight if I need any more. But I can see 
the torch from each torch as long as I can see the one that I need to be heading towards then that is fine that is a perfect path because at night it's going to be even easier because of the illumination not a, as easy as I'd hoped but you know I, I'm willing to accept that Right, okay, so we've got a bunch of things back here. We've got a glowing ember that I need to take there. We've got some coal that I need to take there. Only I need to be a lot closer to get it. Right, okay, so all we need to do now is build a blast furnace and get an iron ingot. Alrighty, let's have a look at what we need for the blast furnace then. So to build a blast furnace, we need a lot more stone, some more clay, and some more sand. It's going to take me a little while to gather all of that, so as with the previous episode, I will cut that out, and I will meet you back here when we're ready to begin. Okay, there we go. I went ahead and I gathered a, a, a few more resources than needed, and I got 10 sand, 10 clay, a lot of stone, and even a reasonable bit of ore. So, let us begin with our blast furnace, shall we? Now, we go to construction, we go to blast furnace, we should have everything that we need. And now we can place down the blast furnace. Now, we've got our bonfire there. I'm not sure yet where I would like to place any future construction. So what I'm going to do is... Well, we've got a cooking area over here. Because, well... No, I'm going to say that that is going to come more under a cooking um, uh, utensil than anything else. We're going to place our blast furnace right about there. Now, out of curiosity, how much is it going to cost me to make another coal smoker? I'm going to need a little bit more clay and a lot more sand. So we're not going to be doing that anytime soon. So we've getting the blast furnace constructing. It's going to take us a little while, actually, because we're also going to get a gold ingot. But we've got plenty of coal right now, and that is one of the big things that we're going to need. That being said, though, let's go ahead and get the coal smoker making us some more, shall we? Um, sure, let's select that. I'll get another, yeah, another 30 coal. Let's start that off. There's two ways, basically of minimizing the amount of time that you have to wait around for anything. One of them is to simply always have a building working, even when you can't foresee any immediate need for those items. And the other one is to simply have a lot of those buildings so that whenever you actually do want it, you can very, very quickly produce the stuff. Now, we need to do what? We need a iron ingot. Now, we're gonna need a tool, I should imagine. You're going to need a melting pot. Very well. I kind of had a feeling that, that was going to be the case. But what that is going to mean is we're going to make a second bonfire. And I kind of want one of these anyway. So let's go ahead and select this. We've got uh, enough from the one bonfire that we have. We've got enough glowing embers to make a second. Now, I'm not entirely sure that I just want to have two right next to each other. Um, nah, I may as well. I, I, I guess I'm not going to lose out by doing that. It's not going to look as good, in my opinion, but I can maybe move one later on or tear one down. You can move things. Now, the moving mechanic is uh, more or less... It has to be empty of any tool. Uh, I'll Well, I could quickly show it with the blast furnace, I guess. Well, the bonfire is a little bit better for it. Let's uh, show it with the bonfire. So, we want to move something. Click on it. If it's yellow, you can move it, but it's got stuff in it. So, you've got to empty it first. If it's red, you cannot move that structure ever. But if it's green... Let me just pick it up. And place it back down. I'm actually reasonably impressed that that, that, that worked that way. So, uh, there we are. We've scienceded it. If you try to move it onto the same spot, the game isn't intelligent enough to realize, oh, yeah, you're not actually moving it. It'll still... It pulls the building down, then rebuilds the other one. But it does it simultaneously. So, you know, you haven't got twice as much building time. But on a big structure like the Blast Furnace, yeah, you would have to have waited for the entire thing to rebuild again, which would have taken... A bit of time and being annoying. Now, we want a melting pot. We've got enough clay for that. It'll take 30 seconds. So, uh, let's get one of those made, shall we? Later on, we might also want a jug. And that's going to take a little bit of clay, too. Okay, I'll bear that in mind for the future. Now, we're starting to uh, stack up on glowing embers and coal. You do have to be reasonably close to something to be able to take anything from it. Um, it shouldn't be too bad, though. Uh, I am starting to regret having so many torches around. And those fires, because they're, they're bloody loud. I hadn't really fully appreciated that. Uh, we'll see that in the future, though. But there we are. Our melting pot is ready. So let's go grab the melting pot. Now we can head on over to the blast furnace. And we should be able to make ourselves some ingots. Now, you can make copper from the copper coins. That requires 15 copper coins. That's not bad. Um, or you can make it from copper ore. In which case, you need two copper ore. Uh, five coal. Does that, do I need less? No, I need five coal regardless and three 
burning, uh, glowing embers for each of these gold ingots. You can only make gold from coins. Ooh, that's interesting. So we're not actually going to be finding any gold uh, nodes. But tin you can get from ore, and iron you can get from ore. Two ore, five coal, three glowing embers. You can also get a steel melting pot eventually, and I imagine there will be plenty of things that will require that. Uh, let's go ahead and make all that we can. Let's uh, pop that in there. There we go. So we have got... All of our ore being converted right away. Now you're going to want to basically keep the blast furnace running pretty much constantly. Once you've got the blast furnace, never let it sit. Sit. Never let it sit. Because if you've got ore in your inventory, that is. I mean, obviously, if you haven't got ore, there's not much you can do about it. But the blast furnace is one of those things. It does take a little bit of time to uh, process from what I've been able to see so far in the game. And it's not something you're going to want to be waiting on. Right, over here. I think we'll grab a little bit more wood and also a little bit more apples as well because apples are going to come in super handy because they heal both health and stamina. I wonder if there'll be many other food sources that do that. Maybe it'll be a more healthy food does that. Though, I mean, I wouldn't have said the strawberries were not healthy, per se. Uh, we could drop a torch down here or a torch over here, actually. I think that would probably be a good idea, dropping another torch just around here. Because this is a, a nice little area there for us. There we go. Now, who is moving around? Bloody rabbits with the sound of, you know, giant goblin footsteps. You're making me paranoid, rabbits! Um, there's some more sunflowers over there. We've also got some branches down here. Uh, I'm actually liking dropping the, uh, the torches around the big trees. Seems like a reasonable place to put these these torches, frankly. Oh, I've not got enough sticks? Really? Wow, okay. Well, we can easily fix that, thanks to this little uh, thicket here. So, three swings, then suddenly loads of sticks. Perfect. Right, let's get our torch down. I know it might seem a little bit trivial to be popping these torches everywhere, but it's going to help us out a lot in the long run, being able to uh, navigate our way back quickly because everything is lit is going to be a huge advantage later on and from here we should have a torch there we are now the sunflower seeds i think you get seeds from sunflowers i don't think you actually get the sunflowers themselves i could be wrong no it's just the seeds but are the seeds animal yeah actually um reasonably i mean they don't give you a lot but if you're lacking and you seem to get a lot of seeds too I wonder what if there is a planting mechanic. We're getting seeds for like wheat and things and strawberries, so there must be a planting mechanic. But these are the only seeds that I've seen so far that actually give anything back. So we've got something to help with uh, when we run out of coconuts, which is good. Right, next thing, get a new level. Fantastic. All right, well, uh, let's have a look at what we can do with level four. Need more coins. All right. I'll bear that in mind. It's a little bit frustrating, but uh, we're going to have to go and get three copper coins and ten gold coins. My goodness, that's going to be a mine. All right, well, I'm heading off to slay some goblins. Hopefully, we'll be able to find them quickly. And if I run into any trouble, then you can uh, be sure that I'll bring you back. But otherwise, if it's just humdrum combat, I will meet you back at camp. Okay, at this point, you're starting to see some of the health effects. Starts off with a bit of uh, snow on the screen, which is... It, it's just not a good option in any game for that to be an effect, in my opinion. It shouldn't look like my graphics card is having problems. <laughs> but I'm going to let it get a little bit worse just so you can see how bad it gets. Up until a point where it gets really obnoxious, and then I'll, I'll put a stop to that. But as you can see... Getting super bad. It gets worse. It starts flickering later on. This is just... Again, it's, it, in my opinion, it is not a good choice. Not a good choice for a way of conveying important information to me. Um, also, I think it... 
Oh, wait, no, is this a weather effect? I think this might actually be a weather effect. I don't think it's pulling in my draw distance. I think it's fog. Now that is something that I'd like to praise. I actually like the weather effects in this game. They uh, give a nice little bit of uh, ambiance, in my opinion. Now, how many coins we got? We've got enough! Hooray! We don't actually need to go back for this one, but I'm going to go back anyway, because I would rather take my level in the safety of my home than out here in the middle of the forest. That's just, that's just a me thing. Uh, where is my home, though? There we are. Jump from the torches. I maybe should put the torches a little bit more frequently. Uh, I'll, I'll see about that. But here we are. I'll continue eating my strawberries. Or at least one more strawberry, just to make sure that the last little bits of that effect are gone forever. My goodness. Right, okay, so we are back. Uh, all the glowing embers are finished, which is very nice. We'll take all of those. My base is super loud now, which I'm not entirely happy with, I'll be honest. And we've got some ingots. Take all of those. There we go. Okay, time to take the level. Let us see what this will bring us. So currently 0 0.24 health and stamina regeneration, 4.4 armor. Next level. Lots of money. Get level. Okay, so it's risen by 0 0.02. But we've actually gained a good good bit of armor. 2.2 armor per level. It's, it's not actually that bad. Main damage is reasonably high with this right now. Uh, right, okay, so let's have a quick look at what we've unlocked. We've unlocked nails, rocks, splinters, stone studded cudgels, wooden tongs, and a crap. Uh, can be crafted in the following buildings, a crafting table. So that's not something I can make myself. Wooden tongs can be crafted with my hands. Okay, that's good to know. Splinters. Now, can be found and picked up, can be crafted in the following building, the crafting table. I think we can make splinters out of stone. So basically, we're just crushing up the stones that we've got into smaller stone shards. The stone-studded cudgel. Now, you may have noticed that some of the goblins have been taking me three hits to kill. The stone-studded cu cudgel makes it so that they only take two. It's a very small amount that they were living by, but this is a big upgrade. And I'll make... Um, 0.53 attacks per second, so slightly slower than the current stone mace. Uh, but it's, a, you know, not a full swing slower. So still, two hits instead of three is uh, is an upgrade there. Rocks can be crafted in the stone table. Is that a stone? Uh, yeah, crafting table as well, sorry. And nails have to be made on an anvil, so it's reasonable to assume that I can now make these things. So, build a hut of branches. Okay, and then a crafting table. Now, the crafting table, I believe, can only be built in a hut. Uh, I can make planks now, which is kind of cool. Oh, I think I've been able to make them for a while. Uh, ooh, we can make a small chest. Now, it's a shame that these aren't listed in the new things I can make, but we can make an anvil. requires set, uh, 15 logs. Not actually that hard to make. Uh, okay, so... And maximum number of buildings for the current level is one. All right, I'll bear that in mind. Certain things you can't make many of. Hut of branches requires a lot of rope, a lot of sticks, a lot of logs, a lot of leaves. This is not going to take me nearly as long as it sounds like it's going to take. I will be cutting it out, but understand that that isn't actually that much if you're chopping down trees and thickets and palm bushes. Uh, this is probably a little bit more of a pain than the nails as well. Small chest. Liking that, honestly. A place to leave my items. Because in this game, when you die, you lose stuff. It's just lost. It isn't left on your corpse, from what I understand. It's flat out just lost. That is bad. But the first thing we're going to do, uh, I'm actually going to try and build myself an anvil. Now, what did I need for that? I need some logs, which is not too bad. So I'm going to go and grab us some logs. It actually won't take us that long to get, so I'll, I'll bring you with me. Um, I think... Uh, which trees do I want to go for? I'd like to go for this tree. I'm trying to pick my trees strategically because some will bear fruit and some won't. And I prefer to keep the fruit trees around. I may eventually drop some of them down, but uh, keeping things around that I can sustainably harvest makes a bit of sense to me. Make, well, makes a lot of sense to me, actually. Right, we've got 16, and that's all I think I needed. Yes, indeed it was. Right, okay. So, let's head down here. Now, of course, I want my uh, smithing supplies to kind of all be together. So, we're going to pop the hammer and anvil. Um, we'll have it there. I mean, to be honest, that's not a good way of 
storing my hammer and anvil. Like half the stuff that I need is on the other side. I'd much prefer it to be spread out a little bit more. And this is the part of me that has a grandfather who's actually a blacksmith talking right now. It's like, yeah, that's a terrible way to organize your tools. Things that you need are not going to be within arm's reach. And when you're dealing with hot metal, you don't want to have to be stretching or moving around unnecessarily. My lord. But oh well. I guess I will forgive the game this small mistake. But uh, we will continue to gather materials once the anvil is made. It shouldn't take that long. We'll be making a bunch of um, nails on that. We'll start those going because we're going to need a lot of nails in the future. I'm actually also going to need a lot more ore, but I will obviously be collecting that off camera. But hopefully the anvil will be made fairly quickly so we can just see what is necessary for that. However, I'm reason you know it's reasonable to assume we're gonna need wooden tongs so let's go about making ourselves a bunch of rope we actually need all the rope we can make so we'll get that going because rope is super super fast we have got a pine cone which is glorious it does mean that we can plant trees and that is not something that i'd, I'd actually noticed before so that's good to know we've got plenty of palm bushes over here so i'm just going to give you a bit of a indication of how much work is going to be involved in gathering this. I'm not going to do all the gathering on camera, of course, but it really is not nearly as much as the numbers alone seem to suggest. Really? There were goblins that close to my camp? I did not know. Oh, this is a terrible place. Terrible neighborhood. I should have investigated more. I should have done my research before I decided where I was going to build my house. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, uh, you know. What's done is done. I mean, it's not, actually. I could easily move everything, but I'm not gonna. Right, we should now have all of these maids. We'll take all of those, and now I need a pair of wooden tongs. There we go, because nothing says I'm going to be dealing with, you know, blistering hot metal like a pair of wooden tongs. I'm actually jesting, because you can actually get um, fire-treated wood that is remarkably difficult to set alight. Again, if, if you prepare in the right way, wood is, in fact, an amazing building resource that I think a lot of people don't quite understand. Um, because the obvious thought is, oh, wood will catch fire. It's, it's unsuitable for a lot of things. It'll expand when wet, all these sort of things. Actually, you can treat wood in amazing ways. You can make wood do a, absolute, a myriad things that you wouldn't expect based only on the fact that it is wood. Right, so, recipes. Nails. Now, nails require any hammer. Oh, okay, so this this actual uh, crafting bench has two tool slots. So we're gonna need the hammer, we're gonna need tongs, and then one ingot will get us 10 nails. How many nails are we gonna need in total for everything we want? We want hat, that's not gonna require any real. I've already got 40 palm leaves, by the way. That's it's that easy to get, really. Uh, crafting a table, going to need 50 nails. So at least two ingots are going to go into that. And another two for that. Ah, oh, my lord. I haven't got enough ingots for this. Yes, scoundrels, you. So I'm going to be getting more ingots, it seems. Um, but the first thing that we're going to be doing, I need to make myself a hammer. So let's go ahead and do that. A stone hammer, please, if you will be so kind. Um, I may actually convert... The copper coins that I've got. Uh, so it's only 15, but that only gives me one ingot. Uh, I guess it's not terrible. Uh, I'll do it. I'll go ahead and make one. But I'm probably going to be using a lot of my copper for that in the very near future, I should imagine. Let's go ahead and grab all of the remaining coal there. Now, how long is that hammer going to take to make? Not very long at all. There we go. So we can actually set the anvil up going now. So go ahead, make me... I will select both of these. Go ahead and make me two iron nails, please. And by the time you come back, I'm going to have gathered an awful lot of iron and all of the materials needed to build our hut and table. And that's where we're going to be wrapping up this episode. So see you in a moment.
Okay, here we go. I have done a fair bit of a gathering. We've got a reasonable amount of iron ore at this point. Enough for four more iron ingots, plus the copper ingot that we already have. We are going to need some more um, coal soon, though, I would say. We have also got 20 nails. Fantastic. Now, we have managed to gather a reasonable amount of items. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks for me was not uh, the moving around all the time it took to gather. It was simply the time it took for me to regenerate my stamina. I have eaten quite a lot of sunflowers worth of sunflower seeds just to keep my stamina going. And even then, there were periods of time where I simply had to stop because I'd, I'd run out of my food. So I was walking back slowly because I was out of stamina to go get more sunflower seeds. But, it, you know, it did take me a quite a, a lot of time. That's definitely something to keep in mind. But we can now build... A hut of branches, and what a fantastic time it is. Now, there's one way in. The arrow shows the way in the, uh, that exists. Um, where do we want it? I think I kind of want it opposite here. Um, maybe with the back to the trees. Maybe not completely back. Backing up on the trees, because I want to be able to build fences and the likes, and I don't want to destroy those trees. So I'd rather just be able to build a line of fences between them. So three, uh, a space of three seems reasonable. We'll pop it right there. Now, it's going to take... A reasonable amount of time for that to build and that's going to give us a little bit of time to look at the next thing that we're going to want to put in there so if we go and have a quick gander we're going to want a table now we've already got all the nails we want for that but we are going to need planks thankfully we can make planks with our hands but you can pretty much everything you can make with your hands you can make in the table i don't know uh, well most things i think i can't say everything but most things um but I don't know if there's a speed difference for that. There may well be, actually. And if that is the case, then, it, you know, there's a reasonable return on the crafting table investment. Yes, it only adds a few unique things, but everything that you could already build, you can build faster. That would actually be a pretty nice way to do it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make 30 planks because it doesn't seem like that's going to be something that we're going to want, uh, you know, only want a small amount of. We're going to want uh, quite a few. In fact, we're going to need more than we've got, which is a little bit a, of a problem. We are going to go ahead and get more nails on the go, though. So we're going to... Uh, since I can use the copper and go... Uh, let's see. Will it use the copper? Oh, yes, it will. I'll just use them up in the speed that they are... Sorry, in the position they are in my inventory, it seems. Fair enough. We're going to need a little bit more wood for the planks because I am absolutely 100% going to want a chest. Um, but that is all I'm going to need for the chest. We're going to need one ingot as well, which is why I only made two instead of three. But then again, we are actually making quite a lot there as well, so we shouldn't have too much trouble. Uh, I do need a little tiny bit more wood, though, so let's go over here and bug the goblins a little bit more. I was taking no small amount of pleasure in harvesting the thickets over here, knowing that the goblin couldn't pass through it, but was actually losing its mind out of a desire to get over and, and clobber me with its cudgel. Ha 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 ha! Silly goblins, this is actually a sport to me. I get to sit here all day and just watch you being too stupid to, you know, actually attack the things in front of you, because you probably make very short work of those thickets. Thank goodness they don't understand thicket, thicket demolishing technology, because I would be in a great deal of trouble if that were the case. Uh, we'll probably only need one or two trees worth, I imagine. Shouldn't be too bad. Now, I'm wondering if the larger trees, and this is something I'll, I'll for science in uh, an episode, uh, in the next episode, and actually see how much wood I get back from the number of logs that drop on a tree that only takes a few hits versus a tree that takes, you know, five or, or to seven hits to destroy. Now, let's have a look. Have we got all of the planks? Not quite, but not far off either. Only, only two more needed there and we'll be able to build our table so i think that's the point where we'll be wrapping up this episode uh, let's grab the iron ingots from there we'll grab the nails from there as well anything else no we're actually doing pretty damn well i must say now the uh hut you can just go inside it from what i understand does not provide any kind of stamina boost or anything like that being indoors it might again that's something we're going to have to for science but this is a very small building and its only purpose is to allow you to build your table because you can't build the table outside some things you can some crafting stations you can build outdoors but the table itself is not one of them and there we go we've got everything we need so let's go ahead and select this and as you can see everywhere outside is red the only place is an indoors area and yes it does bother me a little bit that there's that little one cell over there and i can't seem to do anything with that no just 
Less, less of a deal you make about it, the less my brain hurts having to acknowledge it. But there we go. So our table is being constructed. And in the next episode, we're going to find out some of the things we can make there. One of the things that I think you, if anything like me, took away from our early examination of the encyclopedia is the trap. I think we're level four. Yes, the trap. Now, that is something that's going to be very interesting. Also, the stone cudgel will be cool as well. So in the next episode, animal husbandry. Or at least the beginnings of. I hope you're looking forward to it, though, and have enjoyed this one. Do remember to like if you liked, sub if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.